Hello everyone. Today we are demonstrating the Galdabini GraphWorks 6 software. We're going to go through and set up a very basic tensile test and then run it. So to set up tests with GraphWorks 6 is very easy. We go over a test method. We're going to choose a new method here. Uh, it's going to go right into a setup wizard. The setup wizard can be uh, very easy to use or it can get more complex as well depending on exactly how you need the test to be and your level of expertise. So we're going to start off with the measuring units. Uh, so here we can select which units we would like the machine to display. Uh, we're going to go with newtons and millimeters. Those are going to be the two key measurements that we're looking for today. Let's go back, move ahead here. Uh, so we're going to start with a tensile test. There's quite a big library of tests that are ready to go. Um, flexure, compression, tensile, those are the key ones and everything basically stems off of that. So we'll go ahead and select a basic tensile test. We can select which load cell we're going to use. We only have one connected here. It's my uh, 2.5 kilonewton load cell, about 500 pounds or so. So we'll go ahead and move that forward. Here we can select an extensometer. We're not going to use an extensometer today, but Galdabini offers a full line of all sorts of extensometers. This is for a uh, second extensometer, for a transverse extensometer. All right, here we're going to select the uh, specimen type. So we're using a flat sample here, uh, basically a dog bone. But there's all sorts of preloaded samples that we could use, round samples, strands if we were testing wire, uh, pipe, hexagon, some irregular type shapes, but we're going to stick with flat. Uh, so we'll just type in a nominal value about 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters in width. So set that, move ahead. Here we can set a load limit on the machine. Uh, this is nice because it can protect your load cell if you uh, might be testing over the limit. So we'll go with 1500 newtons, about 60% uh, of our max possible load with this load cell and machine here. So set that, move back, move ahead here. Here we can calculate uh, parameters for elongation. Uh, this is this parallel length figure is also known as the gauge length. For this sample, it's about um, let's see, it's about 50 millimeters or so, about two inches. So we'll go ahead and go with 50 millimeters. Move ahead here. Here we define the graph. This is our x-y axis. Almost everyone uses uh, deformation as the x-axis in load but you have the freedom to change this to any sort of value you could think of. Uh, so deformation, stress, percent elongation, percent deformation, uh, quite a bit to choose from. Let's go ahead and move forward here. So we have our graphs all set up. Here we can set multiple cycles if we we're doing some sort of cyclic testing. Move ahead. Uh, this is for the K-machine procedure. The K-machine procedure is for setting a constant uh, for the deformation of the physical machine. Uh, this is really only needed for compression testing, so we'll skip that for today. Here we're going to define the actual test procedure. So you can see we can set up uh, multiple phases, up to 40 phases. This is going to be a simple test here, so we're just going to do one phase. We're going to control it via speed. So we're going to move at 300 millimeters a minute. We can also control this machine by load and then uh, all sorts of values based off of those two uh, main measurements, which are position and load. So we'll keep it with speed. And um, we'll have the test. We'll have the test just do one phase for this because it's just a tensile test. It's simple. We're just pulling and that's it. So we'll move ahead here. Uh, here we can define the test end mode. So here we can set a percentage off the drop of the max load. So I usually like to set at 20%. Uh, this is the one that most people use, so uh, we'll go ahead and set that. But there's a bunch of different definitions we can set to stop the test procedure at the end of the test.
All right, here's for selecting the elastic portion where exactly it selects that line. This is if you're calculating modulus of the elasticity and some of those more advanced some of those more advanced calculations. So we'll go ahead and move ahead. Here we can define the rupture point. I usually like to save this as 20%. We'll, we'll do we'll do 1 per We'll do it at the max load. So it'll be 0.5% after the max load. There we go. Go ahead and move ahead. All right, so this is if we want to set a preload. So we'll go ahead and set a 10 Newton, or about two pound preload. And that load will apply at 100 millimeters a minute. All right, move ahead here. All right, so this is if we want to return to home after the test, if we want to do automatic return. Let's go with no. Uh, we don't need it for our purposes today, but it's nice if you're just running through a bunch of different samples. Toe compensation, this is for specific procedures that require toe compensations. Basically, uh, the little bit of data at the start of the test, uh, removing that data and just starting right when the tensile action occurs. So we'll skip that for today. Uh, but that is a feature there if you need it. All right, so here we define the results. So this is basically the calculation that we'd like to take after the test. Uh, so there's hundreds of different calculations and values and all sorts of things that we can pull out in terms of data after the test. Uh, but for this one, let's just do, um, let's just pull up some typical results that we get with plastics tensile tests. So this breaks it down a little bit more focused for us here. So this is only for tensile tests on plastics. Uh, let's go, let's get our deformation at max load. So this is basically our elongation right at the rupture point. So go ahead and select that. We'll hit result selection and that's what we'll pull it into our graph over here in the selected results. So we'll move ahead. Uh, here we can add some notes about the data if we want to say, hey, this was a green sample, a blue sample, a big sample, crack sample, whatever. We can identify it, put it in. Let's go ahead and move forward. Here we can further personalize the data with more labels. And uh, this just sets our column layout if we're going to do some printing. So that's pretty much it. We have set our test. So we're going ahead and save that. Let's save it as... Uh, tensile demo one for our purposes. We'll put it into this tensile test directory, hit OK. All right, so there's our new test method right here. So to run this test, we're going to go back. We're going to go to test execution. Go ahead and fire this up. So this message is just to set the uh, total end stroke. Not going to be worried about that today. Here we'll set a log, so this is going to be our data set, so log number one for today, and hit OK. All right, so first we have to position the specimen. So I'm going ahead and tighten the specimen in our grips here, and move forward. I'm going to tear the load. And once we set the sample, we can go ahead and test. So we're setting the preload right now, it got to 10 newtons, now we're pulling, going up, and there's the brake. So after the brake, the machine automatically stops, and we have our measurement. So this got up to about 750 newtons or so. Um, we can go ahead and display all that information in our columns here uh, based on the settings we need. But that's it. That's basically a, uh, that's a basic tensile test for the Galdabini using the GraphWorks 6 program. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll be doing a series of videos that also show how to set up a bend test, compression test, peel test, uh, all the major test methods that you might need for, uh, for your material testing applications. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.